Agro Festival. I think we all lucked out choosing this, not only this beautiful venue, this beautiful day, but the music today is going to be phenomenal. The legendary blues music we're about to hear. It's going to be an unforgettable afternoon. I'm Ann Makovic, by the way, with CBS News Bay Area KPIX, and we are streaming live right now. Uh, we're broadcasting on KBCW, if you want to tell your friends at home, and we are streaming live on CBS News Bay Area. We're going to be here all afternoon through 5 o'clock, so uh, not only do we have 10,000 and beautiful people here in Stern Grove. We've got people all over the world who are ready to enjoy this very exciting concert. So without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to bring on our executive director here, Bob Fiedler. He's been dubbed the best blues guitarist in the world. Stern Grove Festival, please give it up for Eric Gales. Francisco, how y'all doing? Yeah. 
You know what? It's not every day that I look out in the audience and see this number of people out there. So I'm going to yell at y'all one more time, and I need y'all to scream back at me. How y'all doing? What a beautiful day. What a beautiful occasion. And this is awesome. How many times in life can I count that I get the opportunity to open up for the legendary Buddy Guy? Well, my name is Eric Gales, and I got a few tunes I'm going to play for you from my newest album called Crown, and it earned me my first Grammy nomination this year, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's have a good time. Let's check it out.
Thank you so much. Let's find out if San Francisco knows the blues.
<laughs> if you ain't lost a deal, you don't know the blues. You ain't had the big bar and steel. You don't know the blues. If you ain't never had to pawn your guitar, you don't know the blues. If you ain't never slept out in your car, you don't know the blues. You ain't gonna to flat. Don't know the blues with no spare time in the back. Hey, you don't know the blues. You ain't never walked a mile in these shoes. truly believe that San Francisco shown up knows the blues. Yeah! Thank you so much. Is everybody having a good time so far? The next song on the list is a song called The Storm, ladies and gentlemen. It is one of those that I uh, need to warn you that it is, it is a very deep song. This uh, record was written during the pandemic, during some ugly times, and uh, I'm just going to lay it in your laps and see what you do with it. This is called The Storm. Somebody give me an answer Cause I don't understand You see, I wasn't raised like that, San Francisco I wasn't raised like that, no It wasn't part of the plan How can you love what I do? hate who I am How can you see the whole picture When it's you that's inside of that frame Wow Have all my blood, sweat and tears Lord have mercy have they all been in vain? Until it happens to you and you and you and you and you and you, and you, you, you it'll never be the same. 
How can you see the whole picture again when you're stuck inside of that frame? Cause when I leave my house, my wife always worries that I won't make it back. Wow. 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 Only love can erase the hate. I'm a witness to that. I need all y'all for this part. If we could just all come together like we are right now, like we are right now. Come on, y'all, God. And not be apart. No, 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 no. That would bring some sunshine now to this storm in my heart. I appreciate y'all so much for allowing me to stand up here and play my songs. I appreciate you so much for that. I appreciate you. We're going to keep the needle on the record. This one has a little hump to it. I see a couple of folks up here ready to dance a little bit. And uh, this one's called Put It Back. Let's see. Oh, wow. You got my name on the <laughs> That's, Thank you so much. I appreciate that. This is called Put It Back. Let's see what you think about this.
wait a minute, wait a minute, cause cameraman, make sure you get ready and catch them because I'm about to ask them to do something and this is gonna look cool. So I call this the eight mile. If everybody out there got moving possibility of their arms, I want everybody to do this. Can everybody do this? And watch how cool it's gonna look when everybody do it. When I count it off, are you ready? One, two, one, two, Real quick, I wanna let y'all know that after every show, I go directly to the merchandise area. If y'all don't have the new album crown, I'll be right over there. We can sign, I can take pictures with you guys and girls. I hope I don't get in trouble on the radio for saying this, but I ain't gonna do it. But uh, we can load up the pictures on Bookface and Twitter and all that sort of stuff. I normally say something else, but I'm gonna keep it PG today. And uh, y'all just meet me over there right after the show and uh, we'll make that happen for you. Are you having a good time so far? I like 
like about him is we've got to be free. Uh-huh. He wear no shoe shine, he got toe jam football, he got market fingers, he shoots. Coca-Cola, but he's got long hair down to the knees. One thing I like about him is we've got to be free. Come, come together right now. Ain't over me. San Francisco just for a very short minute. I want to pass the baton over to my keyboard player because I want him to experience this moment right now because his mother and his grandmother is out here in the audience right now. Y'all give it up for Jonathan Lovey!
Y'all having a good time? San Francisco, are y'all having a good time?
Francisco, check this out. I am uh, very adamant about utilizing the time that I'm allotted and get in and out the way and make the most of the time that I have. And with, as it stands right now, I got four more minutes, but I want to use it. I want to. I want to use it in this way. I want to use it in this way, just for the simple fact that Buddy Guy is one of the last living legends that he makes it his business to reach back to the younger generation and give them a shine and give them a spotlight. And for that, I am ever grateful. Y'all let him hear it all the way in the back back there. Why y'all let it, please give it up for my bass player, Orlando Thompson on the bass. Once again, turn it to 11 on the keys. Back on the drums, we got ball head Nicholas Hayes. Back on percussion, y'all give it up for my lovely wife, LaDonna Day. Now, now here's the, here's, the, here's the most crucial part. I chose this particular moment right here to show y'all who the real star is. And he is the newest member of the group. And I would like to introduce him to all of you people. Wait one second. So, check this out. His name is Crown. He's named after my album that went for a Grammy nomination this year. He is seven months old. He's a teacup poodle, and he will not get any bigger than this. And he is the star. So say hello to Crown. First, let me ask him one question. Did you have a good time? Uh, that means he had a good time. So this is Crown, he travels with us, he keeps us sane, and he's a good little boy. Say bye-bye, say bye-bye. <laughs> San Francisco, I promise my heart to God, I love y'all, man. I'll see y'all over at the merchandise table. We can sign, we can take pictures, we can do all of that. I see y'all out there in the camera land. I thank y'all so much for this opportunity. And I can't wait to come back and play for y'all again. Thank y'all so much. Thanks to the Buddy Guy team. Thanks to the Stern Grove. Y'all rock, y'all are amazing. Thank you so much.
to our broadcast because of the fact that I was trying to get to crown the little dog that he showed up. Did you see him? So cute. Anyway, we have a lot coming up. We're waiting for, of course, our headliner today, Buddy Guy. And I'm going to speak with him live coming up after a quick break. So stick around. I mean, uh, the, the night before last, we played up in Ronan Park, and uh, I was just explaining to you, it was like this half open, half closed in uh, amphitheater, and it's beautiful. And then now here, we're at this another beautiful open air. This is like amazing. This is so awesome. It's so glad to be here, and awesome to be here opening up for the legendary Buddy Guy. That's amazing. Absolutely. So you've been playing with Buddy Guy for several performances. Yeah, yeah. We've been on tour all year, off and on uh, with Buddy, and uh, every show has been amazing. Every show has been awesome. I mean, it, you're fantastic in your own right, obviously, but to play with a legend, what yeah. is that like? It is, you know, I soak it in. Uh, every moment I get to be around him, it is like, uh, you know, just massive knowledge from him. He just had, a, he just celebrated a birthday a couple of days ago, and uh, to be out here still striving and, and and serving up the blues hot and raw is uh, such an awesome honor to be a part of, and uh, I, I don't take it very, I don't take it lightly at all. To talk a little bit about your music, one of the songs that I particularly liked was "I Want My Crown." Yes. Where did that come from? Man, well, me and uh, my good friend Joe Bartomasa, who was a really good friend of mine, uh, we were talking about this record, and uh, Joe was like, Eric, man, you've been around for a while. It's your time to take your crown. And then we just turned it into a tune, I Want My Crown, and uh, it turned out to be pretty good. It did. So now you have your crown, or are you still wanting your crown? Where, where, where's the crown? It's in the eye of the beholder. It's in the eye of the beholder. I mean, you know, I... I uh, I'd like to say that I have it, and uh, you know, but it, you know, it's a mental thing, and uh, you know, I think everyone is deserving of a crown. You get up every day and you try to push forward, then that crown is yours, you know. And um, on, a, on another note, that this is my first, this record landed me my first Grammy nomination, and you know, I'm really excited about that, and uh, you know, just going to keep going forward and striving and, and pushing hard as I can. 
Now, uh, let's talk on a more serious note. Uh, you said that the death of George Floyd yes. has influenced some of your re music most yes. recently. Talk yes. a little bit about that and sort of how that affected you. Yeah, man, it, it affected me in a way that what made him any different than me. That could have been me, you know, and uh, uh, ironically enough, the day before us beginning to write for this record, that happened. So it kind of changed the whole traje trajectory of how, we be how I began to write for this record and just some things things that, you know, begin to rear his ugly head in 2020. Not only the um, ugliness of the pandemic, but, it, you know, it brought racial divide and it brought about things that, uh, you know, wasn't so cool. I mean, let's face it, uh, racial divide didn't just happen in 2020. It's been happening, but it 2020 made some people show their faces. And, uh, you know, it just brought me to mention about some things that had happened to me personally in life and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, this is, this is what I need to write about. And um, the world, you know, uh, uh, received it very, very well. It's a particular song that I'm going to do tonight that I've been doing that has everybody in tears. It's called The Storm. And uh, one of the lines from it basically says, how can you like, how can you love what I do but hate who I am? And it's pretty deep. It's pretty intense. Uh, but the message is to be gotten across as a conversation, not as a point to where I'm yelling at you or shouting or screaming at you. It's just a conversation of informative information. Stern Grove. We're in a bit of a walkway, so, you know, things are happening, live television. But I want to introduce you to some friends that I just met, longtime Stern Grovers, and um, tell us about why you keep coming. I mean, this is such a gift. It's like free in the summers, every Sunday. Uh, you know, they, they re, they've like renovated this over time. Like you, if you get late, you're like up there in the trees, but you're still enjoying the music. I mean, and they have like international talent that you'd pay like whatever, hundred, a couple hundred bucks for in a venue and it's free. So it's, amazing. it's amazing. Yeah. What time did you have to come here to, to get right. this spot? We cheated. We had some friends that came earlier. We arrived. I don't know, 10:30-ish, but we got in the I got in the line with them. I'm not sure what time they got there. Maybe nine o'clock. Right. Suzanne here is from Castro Valley. You're from San Francisco, Steve. Uh, from Castro Valley, you've been here before as well. Yes, I've been coming since I was about seven years old. Really? Because it is a real family affair. That's something that's really special about this. Absolutely, it's a tradition. And what's better than live music in a beautiful park? Nothing. Do you have any special memories you want to share? Yes, so James opened for the Psychedelic Furs a couple years ago and was incredible. And the Revolution Princess Band, that was a highlight. Um, there's so many good ones. And what are you guys looking forward to when it comes to Buddy Guy, the legendary Buddy Guy? I mean, I'm not an aficionado. I have seen him before. I mean, I love the blues in general. I, I know that he's 87 years old. He's at the end of his his you know, time at this is billed as a farewell tour. So um, I'm just glad to be here. And like, I'm sure he's going to be like very gracious to the crowd. And I mean, you know, and I'm, he's a Kennedy honors winner. Yeah. You know, a he's a living legend. Yeah. A performer comes here and they look out and it's just a, such a wonderful, you know, view for them. Just like the, the opener, Eric Gales. I, I know it like typically blows them away. And, and I, I, I get off on that energy too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. coming up right after our broadcast. But in the meantime, let's talk a little bit more about Buddy Guy. Of course, we heard from him live earlier, and we're going to see his performance coming up. But I took a bit more of a deep dive into his background. It's pretty fascinating. He's got quite a history. Here's a look. And raised in Louisiana, the son of sharecroppers, Buddy Guy is an eight-time Grammy Award winner, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, and Kennedy Center honoree. The legendary blues musician just celebrated his 87th birthday. Guy's guitar playing has influenced a generation of musicians with his unique style, cultivated in blues clubs on the south and west sides of Chicago. The Chicago influence and Buddy Guy's influence is extremely important. CBS News Bay Area caught up with Ronnie Stewart at Everett and Jones Barbecue in Jack London Square. Now, baby, this is the blues. The West Coast blues historian and musician remains in awe of Buddy Guy, as did some of the greats who wanted Guy to play with them. Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters, Otis Rush, all of them would talk about Buddy Guy. They say, you ought to bring that guy here, that young kid, he's bad. 
And you know, Buddy Guy, man, when he was young, he made his own guitar at 13 years old. Stewart runs the West Coast Blues Society and is a member of the Caravan of All Stars, a Bay Area powerhouse review that showcases West Coast style. As to the difference between West Coast and Chicago blues. You have a jazz feel. You know, and then Chicago. And that's basically, of course, the variations. The shuffle, which is the main beat in blues, Chicago shuffle. That's straight out of Africa. That's straight out of Africa. In February 2012, Buddy, along with other blues musicians, performed at the White House for then-President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. The occasion to celebrate the blues, music with deep roots in Africa and slavery. The music migrated north, from the Mississippi Delta to Memphis to my hometown of Chicago. As a child, Buddy Guy picked cotton by hand. Now he was playing the blues in front of the first African-American president. And all of a sudden you go to sleep and wake up, you're invited to play music in the White House, self-taught, never learn anything from a book, so it's a dream come true for me. And it's also a dream come true for the Bay Area to see Buddy Guy perform live. This event at Stone Grove, the people is getting a rare opportunity to see a legend. Another legend agrees, four-time Grammy Award winner, the great Taj Mahal. I mean, he can get in there with the grittiest of them. He really had that kind of flair. Taj says Buddy never stays in his lane, and that's what makes him so good. He always was, you know, right there on the edge, wild guitar player. <laughs> and, yeah, love him, and, you know, and, and all the different things that he does. And as for this tour being Buddy Guy's last... Buddy, I know you say you, you, you're on the last round here, but, hey, you know, you know if you want to come back out again, ain't nobody going to tell you to go home. <laughs> nice, at least not me. Yeah, you can see he's had quite a life, and this is supposedly his farewell. Heart of San Francisco, this is the 86th annual Stern Grove Festival. winner. He's influenced generations of guitarists. He's a living legend. Please welcome Buddy Guy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, did I play that too loud? You gotta let me know, because the way y'all make me feel, I'll play all day and all night if you want me to. But I can play something so funky you can smell it. Yeah. And it goes like this.
Just a woman told my mother Just before I was born You got a boy child coming Gonna be a No, 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 I ain't gonna let y'all f*** that song off like that now Do you know I started coming here in 1967 And that's too many years to fuck that song up like that now. I'm gonna try it again. He's just a woman told my mother. Just before I was born. You got a boy child coming. Yeah. All right. He gonna make for the women. Run and jump and shout Then the world come on to know I got a mojo too. I got a John the Conqueror. And I came to San Francisco. The fuck you. Lord, I can make a little girl leave me by my hand. Then the world don't want to know.
feel You just don't realize That you got to yourself a good deal She's 19 years old In California she got way Like a baby child Nothing I can do to please this young woman I'm trying to make this young thing feel satisfied That's not easy at my age I can't ask her where she going She would tell me where she been Then she would start a conversation That I don't have no She's 19 years old. And don't you know she got away like a baby child? Nothing I can do to please this drunk woman. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh yeah. Boy, I'm just trying to make this young thing feel satisfied. Yeah.
And I got one I uh, I got to let you do this because I, I do make an album and it's hard to find blues being played on your regular radio stations anymore they quit playing it but I'm here tonight to tell you as long as I'm alive I'm not gonna stop playing yeah. thank you because you can count the one of still around that grew up with the muddy waters, the howling wolves, and the BB Kings. Yeah. And this was here, ladies and gentlemen, before the British come in here and turned up the amplifiers and had to let you know who BB King and Muddy Waters was. Yeah. But anyway, let me get back to a little story of my life. I was born on a farm in Louisiana, and I didn't know what running water was until I was 14 or 15 years old. And I had to drink the water out of the bayous of what they call creeks. And do you know, a couple of days ago, I made 87 years old. And the pride I'm trying to tell you is that water must have been okay because I'm still here. And the best thing about it, I didn't have fucking water. Yeah. Now I'm telling you that because I remember my mother. I was just being interviewed by your CBS radio a few minutes ago. They got me before I, before today and want to know but no want to know about my polka dots. I left Louisiana September twenty-fifth, nineteen fifty-seven. And my mom, I was the only child leaving and I was trying to make her she had had a stroke and I was trying to make her feel good. I say, you know I'm gonna go to Chicago and make a lot of money, which I didn't know I was lying. <laughs> and I'm gonna drive back down here in a polka dot Cadillac, and she did smile. But I knew I was lying. So before she passed away, I didn't get a chance to explain that to her, that I had lied to her. So I went to Fender. They made, you see one a few minutes ago, they made polka dot guitars for me, polka dot shirts. 
<laughs> this remembers of my late mom. Yeah. Thank you. And to get to a little more about it, she was combing her hair one day in, bro in front of a broken mirror before the sun went down because we didn't have electricity. And of course, I told you can run in water and what no such thing as air condition unless you had this. And my, by the way, let's give my band a big hand. Will you do that for me? Thank you. And when I first started working with my drummer, he's my producer for my last six, seven, Reason I can't give you exact amount because every time you see me go back and get that cup, you know, shit everywhere while it's sanitizer. It's alcohol, right? Yeah, this is. So wash your hands and alcohol and all that and these hand wipers, so why not drink it? So that's not water I'm drinking out that cup. <laughs> but anyway, my mother was combing her hair by a broken mirror, and I danced between her and that mirror, and I think I was 10 or 11. I said, Mom, I'm good looking. She didn't crack a smile. She was chewing tobacco, dipping snuff in the fucking pipe. And by the way, she didn't die from cancer, from smoking a pipe. And none of my grandparents died from that. That tobacco must have been okay. This tobacco, you get to be fucked up. Excuse my language. I usually couldn't cuss before hip hop came out. But anyway, she looked around at me as I told her that. She said, son, beauty is only skin deep. And my drummer said, let's make a song out of that, buddy. And here's what we came up with. I've been around a while. I know wrong. Right, learn a long time ago. Things ain't always black and white. Just like you can't judge a book by the cover. We all got to be careful how we treat one another.
child down when he was old enough to know. I said, out there in this big wide world, you're gonna meet all kind of folks. I said, son, it all comes down to just one simple rule that you treat everybody just the way you want them to treat you. Don't we all? Oh, yes. We look the same. you to help me. I ain't never had no fun by myself. All you got to do is repeat after me, and I'm glad you got the sunlight, and I can see your face. Fuck this song up, I'm going to say, fuck up. Now, all you got to do is repeat after me and say, skin deep. Say it louder. I can't hear you. That's better. Y'all taking it down. Take it up for me a little louder. Yeah, now. I like that one. I love that one. I love that one more. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. That's cool. I couldn't fuck it up, so now I'm going to try this one. Let me try this one now. I want you to do it just like this now. Say that. Okay, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I love you so much. I love you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I do that because normally I play at night and I can't see your face, and I was just showing some people backstage. Wouldn't it be great if the whole world could stop being mad and some of them the fuck they're mad about? I see that every day and thank God I'm not a politician because I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. If we would tell the truth and love one another, now I don't want you to hug and kiss me and just don't hurt me. And that's the way I feel about you. I don't care if you don't like me. You can't stop me from loving you. Don't even try that. Yeah. Now back to what I love most. And like I said earlier, I didn't learn nothing from a book. I got my lesson from people like this, ladies and gentlemen.
Nou, bloemke niet keer. The evil man wants your woman. Girl, I think you look jealous when we apart. Yes, I said the evil man wants your woman. And I think you look jealous when we apart. How blue can you get, baby? The answer's right here in my heart. I gave you a $50 dinner. You said that was a snack. I let you live in my penthouse. You said that was a shack. I gave you a brand new Ford. You said I want a Cadillac. I gave you seven children. If your wife make you mad, don't get an attitude and pack your bag. Look at you. The five little children you're leaving behind, you gonna pay some alimony. I do sometimes. Guess what, man? It's cheaper to keep her. It's cheaper to keep her. Well, well, well. You didn't pay for $2 to bring the girl home. Now you got to pay $50,000. Leave her alone. <laughs> See another girl out there, you just might, might want to make a switch. She ain't gonna want you cause you ain't gonna have <laughs> She gonna keep her. I'm gonna leave that love. I'm gonna leave that love for you right now, all right? Okay. Okay, I got a number I call. I got a number I call. I'm gonna slip in on you a little bit.
Don't say nothing. I'm not through yet. How about that young man that opened the show for me tonight? I can't hear you. And I got a son here. My son didn't know what the blues was about until he got 21. And let me explain that to you. Our young men and young women can be sent to war and come back at 17, 18 years old and spend two years, kill or be killed. And if they're lucky they didn't get killed, but when they, come, <clears throat> excuse me, when they come home, they ain't old enough to drink a beer. I don't like that. If you're old enough to go and kill or be killed, I think you're old enough to drink a beer. And that's why I say I'm not a politician, but maybe some of y'all should tell you a politician, you should think about that. If you can make a man or woman out of them at 18 and come back, and they want to hear a buddy guy blues song, you got to wait another couple of more years. <laughs> but let me say this, this young man that opened the show, and I got a son, the reason I'm telling you about that, age limit. All of my kids grew up in the house with me. I didn't go home and say it. I want you to play a guitar, drums, or keyboard, because if you tell them what you want them to do and they're unsuccessful, when they get a little older, they're going to point their fingers and say, if it wasn't for you, I would have did something else. Whatever they do, you just let them go on their own and you support them what they want to do. Yeah. And the point, the point I want you to know about my son, I think he's 12, 13 years old, and every 4th of July they would put the records on in my yard. And they would be spinning Michael Jackson and uh, Prince and my son was smiling. And every time they would put my record on, my son would run out there and say, oh, no, don't play that. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, when he turned 21, he walked into the club where I was. And he didn't cry out of one eye. <laughs> Matter of fact, out of two eyes, he just cried out of one. He said, Dad, I didn't know you could do that. And he said, I'm going to bring him out. Let's give Eric and my son a big hand to come out and help me jam this song.
I want to thank all of you all for putting up with us tonight, or today. But let me tell you something. I say, everything going to be all right. I say, yeah, everything going to be all right. Cause when we are together, woman, we're gonna make love tonight. Yeah, I am. I think I'm locked up in love again. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Shit, I'm locked up in love again. I haven't had no loving like this. People have gone knows when. One drink of wine, two drinks of gin. Put a little woman like you, put me in the shape of me, and I hold my hand. And I'm gonna holler, what's the use? I ought to, but I ain't a girl, I should just cut you loose. To my neck. The only time you're good for me, baby, is when I cash my check. That's why I'm gonna put my hand. I'm gonna holler. What's the use? I want to, but I ain't a girl. I should just. I got to cut it out right now. Yeah. And on my way of cutting it out, I want to let you know that uh, I'm trying to keep that blues alive that made blues what it is today throughout the world. Just a little bit of this, I'm running over time, but I just got to let you know this, the late Jimmy Reed said.
here we just saw an amazing performance from buddy guy i'm here with monique seltani that was incredible i mean how about the moment when he went into the crowd i mean oh my goodness my heart is pitter pattering i could feel the music to watch him play his heart and soul out i was out there in the audience rocking right along with him it is so beautiful to be a part of this experience here at stern grove at the stern grove festival in san francisco the crowd the music, the community, how we come together. This is such a meaningful day and so exciting and such an honor for me to be able to be a part of it. Oh, yeah. yes. It's just been an amazing day. I want to show you the, the crowd here, if we can pan around there. Uh, and and, and the, the musicians, Eric Gale, the opener, he's out there in the middle right now. Buddy Guy stepped off stage and he threw it back to Eric Gale, who's fabulous. The two have performed together um, several times throughout this tour, so it, there's a lot of synergy between the two, and it's just a really amazing experience. And the crowd has been just fantastic today. They've been so welcoming, so warm, and of course, we're talking about this magical venue here in Stern Grove. Monique, I know that you've seen all of the concerts so far. How does this one rank? You know, it's been such an honor for me to be here to every single uh, one of them that we've broadcast here. Um, how does it rank? I mean, it's so hard to pick it. I said it last week. It's like choosing between your identical twin daughters like I have. Everyone is so unique. Everyone is so different. The crowd is different. The music is uh, different. But one thing remains the same. The spirit of community and how we come together with music has been one of the most magical things. And the other thing that I absolutely love about it is you literally never know what's going to happen. It's <laughs> like the beauty of live television, the beauty of this concert. Sometimes they come out, they do a whole bunch of encores. Sometimes they don't. You don't know. And it's just so fun and exciting to be able to be here and to be a part of it with you all and the rest of the community here. It really, really is. It was uh, a day that we're not going to forget. And I want to bring in Bob again. He's the executive director of Stern Grove. Bob, congratulations. This Thank was you. a fantastic show. That was fantastic. We loved it. How, so how would this compare to some of the other concerts that we've seen this summer? You know, as Monique said, it's a little different every single week. Last week we had EDM. Today we had a blues legend, completely different demographic, completely different genre of music, and yet it, deals, it does still bring people together. So different stuff, but then there's overlap. Well, yeah, so how do you decide who's going to play at, at, at Stern Grove? I mean, how does that, I mean, you are going from all these different genres and trying to plug them into eight different slots. Well, we do have a process and we have a committee that helps us decide, but the number one priority is diversity. We want to serve as wide a community as possible, and we hope that when someone gets our schedule for the year that they can look and see at least one show that they're interested in. Yeah, I mean, and, and really, even if it's a band that maybe you don't know, you're gonna love it. I mean, that's just what we found. I know that that's what you found, like Snarky Puppy right, you like talked about. I, I haven't heard of them, but then. Yeah, so excuse me, I didn't mean to cut you off, but one of the things that I found to be so interesting is some of the names you know and some of them you don't know, and because it's free, because it's accessible to everyone, whether you're watching, you know, at home or you're watching here for free, you can experience this new genre of music and fall in love with something new, hang out with a different community of people that maybe you didn't know, but they live right in your backyard, and so because you have this diversity audience and because it's accessible to everyone because you're so generous to offer this to the community for free I think that sometimes we think about events and festivals and we don't know if we can get a ticket or they're too expensive or they're not for everyone and what I love about what you do at Stern Grove is it really is for everyone regardless of the genre and so let's talk a little bit about that it is free it is accessible this is all a nonprofit that has been putting this on for 86 years now and it started with one family and here we are 
Indeed, it really is quite a special and extraordinary thing. It literally is the descendants of Levi Strauss. That's how San Francisco this is. And today, the Goldman family helps to steward and shepherd this and, uh, you know, helps to lead. But we work all year long to raise about $4 million so what we can give this gift to the people of the Bay Area. And where does that money come from? Everyone. It comes from the people out there. It comes from the people here. Everyone. So it's the community. It's people. It's sponsors, it's foundations. We get a little money from the government, but, uh, you know, we work hard to fundraise. It's pretty amazing. I mean, why haven't you at this point? We've seen how much money, you know, some of these large festivals can bring in around the world. Why not turn it into something like that and make some bank? Well, it really is just part of our mission to give the gift of free music. And it doesn't mean that we don't fundraise around the edges, but at our core, it's always going to be for the people, for music. Now, I know it, there's been some difficulties over the last few years. We had a bunch of winter storms last season. You had a bunch of damage around here, but the Grove always bounces back. It does. We're a resilient bunch. It's been a heck of a last couple years between we had a flood, the water main broke, and then last year with the atmospheric rivers, there were like 130 trees that fell and smashed buildings here. But we bounce back. We work hard all winter so we can deliver the goods. Okay. And you certainly delivered today. I want to show you another look at the crowd here as everybody's sort of uh, packing up and going home. A lot of people brought their individual picnics in here. A lot of families. Everybody's in a good mood. I mean, this was quite an experience. And the artists were right there. I mean, not only just uh, in, in in a spirit, but, but also physically, of course, as we saw Buddy Guy walking amongst the crowd. So this was something that uh, people are not going to soon forget. And uh, Monique, you know, we were talking a little bit about the past concerts and the concerts to come. What's your favorite thing about these festivals? Gosh, you know, honestly, you never know what you're going to get. You don't know who you're, what you're going to experience. And every single uh, festival I've been to so far it made me feel something a little bit different. And so I think, obviously, that is this feeling that is music is so unique to you and how you connect with it in this, like, really meaningful way. Last weekend, I connected really meaningful to the music that was there. And then today, to hear Buddy Guy, you know, I come from a music background in my family. And so I could just see my, uh, my mom and my stepdad rocking out and wishing they could be here with us. And I'm sure they were watching at home so we all connect to music in our own special unique way and what I love about the crowd of course the people that are here but you watch them they'll pick up their stuff when they leave they are respectful they understand this is a park they are they love their uh, heritage where they come from San Francisco through and through you know I was walking down the hill with a guy earlier and he says my dad was the first dentist in Healdsburg and you know they were trucking down their hill and they were so proud to be here and I think gosh the community from all over comes together in this magical place with these beautiful trees to hear music and a lot of times they have a beautiful bottle of wine with them. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so you're talking about the walk down here. If you've never actually been to Stern Grove, you 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 park or you get dropped off and then you have to do this little switchback thing and it's all the way down and on the walk down, you sort of like feel all the stress melt away from your body. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking after I park my car, okay, I guess I'm going to be speaking in front of 10,000 people. And, you know, switch, switch, switch. Each time, you just start to feel the the groove of the grove, I guess I, I, I might say, right? This should, be, should we coin that? So <laughs> it's one thing that, um, that is really, I think, everybody felt as they come down here. Of course, we're going to have to go back up on the other way. All right, Eric Kales. Hey. Oh, gosh. Okay, fantastic performance. If you yeah. didn't see Eric, he was the opener. Tell us, how did it feel to be out there? Man, dude, all I can say, it, it was breathtaking. It was mind-blowing, and I meant what I said. I cannot wait to come back here. This is beautiful. Y'all got a real good situation here, and I am so glad to have been a part of it today, and uh, I'm just treasuring every moment right now. And I know you've played with Buddy Guy before, yes. um, and, and and, and, you know, you guys are out there wrapping up his set together. What yeah. is that like? It's exhilarating, man. You got the older generation. Me, I want to say me. I'm 48, and I'm not afraid to say that. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, you know, you have the much younger generation. But, you know, like I said on, on stage, how Buddy reaches yeah. back to the younger generation and, and, and making sure that the blues is still alive and well, if he, if he has anything to do with it, as well as I feel the same way, okay. and just keeping it rolling. And uh, it's just a, such a beautiful thing to be traveling all 
all over the world and getting to do this and see so many smiles on all the people's faces. And for this moment in time, for this three plus hours, we hope to have people not worry about anything that they're worrying about outside of the music. Like we're all on one accord. Everybody's in the same moment at the same time. If we can take a little bit of this and spread it out in the world, then the world just might be a little better. Yes. Okay. okay. So you felt that as well. I was just I talking about that, how like just walking into the I Grove, you absolutely. just start to let the troubles. And it's just a, it's a different place. I mean, can you compare it to anywhere else? I don't know. I, it's, it's hard to because music is something that I've been involved with all my life. So I have had this sensation since I was four years old. So uh, it's very familiar to me. It's unfamiliar when I don't feel it. You know what I mean? So having the opportunity to feel it yet again is such, again, such a beautiful place, man. Look, Stern Grove, I'm telling you, man, I'm going to have to tweet and and, and, and post and, and, and all this all this stuff about it, man. And uh, yeah, I, I was telling my wife that, man, I, I of course, Buddy going to be him, but you know, I tend to have a foul mouth, so I kept it pretty PG tonight. No, no, and, uh, Buddy I did had not. Some, I had we had to beep to that out. I had some things I wanted to say. I said, you know what? I'm going to keep it PG, but you know, hey, man, that's the living legend, man. He can do what he want to do, man. <laughs> totally <laughs> he do can do what he want to do. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, we appreciate you, too. So where to next? Spokane. Okay. Do it all again. Yeah. And then Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, and then I got Colorado, Oklahoma, Minnesota, Wisconsin. We don't get home till August 27th, so oh, wow. we're out for a minute. Okay, but you're going to take San Francisco in your heart. Oh, man, it's in here. It's in here. Right. Eric Gales, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Happy travels, thank and you. thank you all for joining us today. Uh, coming up on CBS News Bay Area, we're going to have our uh, 